Hey, let's talk about brushes. There are so many different kinds of brushes you could use as a watercolor artist, but we're going to talk about my five favorite brushes I think everyone should have, and I'll show you how to use them and why. The first brush is a round brush. If you've been painting with watercolor, you know that this is the most common and most versatile brush any watercolor artist can have. It can do pretty much anything. We can use the body of the brush to create big shapes. We can use the tip of the brush to create small thin shapes. You can have really, really tiny round brushes down to below a size zero up to a size 16 round brush, depending on what you usually paint and what you need it for. The brush I'm using is a Princeton Heritage round brush size 10. And I personally don't think it matters what brand you use, if it's really fancy or expensive, um, as long as you agree with the quality and it works well for you, get any round brush that you feel comfortable with using. Round brushes have a stiffer center section that springs back really easily so you can switch from the tip of the brush to the body of the brush with ease and lots of control. I will say probably 90% of the time I'm painting, I'm using a round brush because they really are so versatile. I can be painting flowers and go quickly from the petals to the center stamen to the leaves, all while using the same brush. If you take good care of your round brushes, they will maintain a really sharp point so you can continue to create those fine details with them. Another way I like to use round brushes is to use a circular scrubbing motion kind of with the side of the brush. It makes these really nice fluffy organic shapes that I use to make clouds or greenery or even uh, fluffy flowers. I'm really inspired by nature, so a lot of my examples will be nature-based, but really the round brush is super versatile. You could have only that brush in your toolkit and you would be able to paint pretty much anything you wanted to. You would just maybe have to be a little bit more detailed or concentrated in a different way. The next brush is a flat brush. Flat brushes are flat. They have a flat body instead of a round body. And I put them as the number two brush that I think you need because they are pretty much the opposite of a round brush. So they're going to be able to do things that the round brush can't easily do, like creating really easy straight lines or rectangular lines or square shapes. So there's also some other fun shapes that you can do with a flat brush, like that curved bumpy line in the middle, or even a complete perfect circle spinning the flat brush around. So I would just encourage you to mess around with your brushes on a scrap piece of paper and see what shapes they can make because it might surprise you. Another thing that I like to paint with a flat brush is this brick wall pattern. Uh, obviously very versatile when you're painting any kind of architecture. And you can also paint these really fun textured flowers with a flat brush as well. They kind of remind me of Cosmos flowers. And um, you can use it for the petals. You can use the flat brush for the greenery, especially if you have really jagged, stiff edged greenery. So I think sometimes people don't think of the flat brush when they are thinking of organic um, nature shapes, but it's possible. We can use the flat brush in that way. And then of course, I love using it to make circles. If you're doing like a bokeh effect, the flat brush is great for that. The next brush is a rigger brush. And you might think it looks kind of like a round brush, but there are some key differences. First, the base of the brush, the number of bristles is a lot lower and it does not hold very much water. So when I use it on the sides, the body of the brush, I get a lot of dry texture from the paper because there's really not a whole lot of water and pigment. Also, the bristles are very long and because there is no strength from the center, it is a very pliable and flexible brush making it easy to create very long, straight, thin lines. This is obviously very perfect for painting grass, which I use it a lot for. Uh, grass, stems, tree branches, flowers, all of that kind of stuff is perfect for the rigor. Another application would be the whiskers on an animal. So you can do these really long straight strokes that are very consistent because it doesn't hold a lot of water and pigment. So there's not a lot of chance for variation. 
One of my favorite ways to use the rigger is on its side to create lots of texture. I use this for like the bark of a tree or the dirt texture on a path. I feel like it's a very underrated way to use the brush and I love it. Um, it's also really great for line detail when you're painting shells or the really tiny details on something and you really want to make sure that everything's consistent and you don't have a lot of paint that the round brush might give you. Perfect for the antenna of bugs, the body of a bug, maybe a butterfly, or the details on a butterfly's wings. I also really love the organic edges that it gives, so sometimes I do um, this side swiping stroke for grass and bushes on landscapes. The next brush is a mop brush. The reason I included a mop brush in my top five when it's kind of similar to a round brush is because a mop brush is a lot more helpful for large areas and washes. It has a more free flowing body with looser bristles that don't spring back. So there's a lot less control, which I actually like for certain applications. Um, it also holds a very significant amount of water and paint. So you're able to do large washes for a sky or a big area of grass for landscapes. It just has a very different application and usually the application is not in detail where the round brush kind of shines. So here I'm painting a sky with the mop brush. I'm able to very easily cover the whole space with the body of the brush, lots of water and pigment, and then I can go in, paint the clouds. I can also use the tip for some detail that is a little bit more free and organic, but because the body of the brush is not as stiff, you just have a lot less control. I really like that when I paint very loose, large, abstract florals that I want to blend together, that I don't want a whole lot of detail. It works really well for me when I'm doing say a pattern, um, a large pattern, free flowing type fun thing. That's my favorite way to use a mop brush as well as when I need a large area of wash for landscapes, sky, grass, that sort of thing. Those are my favorite applications for a mop brush. I think you need some kind of large wash brush. If not a mop brush, then a large flat wash brush. The last brush is a filbert brush. Now this brush is kind of like a flat brush. It has a very flat body, but the top is curved over. And the reason I included this brush in my must have five top brushes is I feel like you can pretty much create anything with a mop brush, a flat brush, a rigger brush, a round brush, but the filbert brush has a very unique curved shape. And it is really hard to get these curved lines without using a filbert brush. So even though it's not a necessary brush, if you have this brush with the other four, you can literally paint anything in my opinion. <laughs> so this brush creates these naturally curved rounded shapes. So when you make a stroke, it's going to have a natural teardrop shape. And that is really hard to replicate with any other brush. Anytime you need a curve shape or a half circle, you could use the filbert brush. Anytime you need a teardrop shape, you can use the filbert brush. It is such a great brush to use for florals. I know some people that use filbert brushes exclusively for their florals because it creates these naturally round petal shapes that are just so beautiful with a nice teardrop point. I will say I tried to use the filbert for the center of this flower and it did not work out. So I went back to the round brush with its nice point to do that, which just reinforces my opinion that all of these brushes are better when they work together. So let's go over the brushes that I used. Again, you do not have to have these brushes to have a good brush. My filbert brush is a size 10 master's touch. My mop brush is a size three Polina Bright mop brush. My rigger brush is a rigger brush also from Polina Bright. I used a three quarter inch Princeton Heritage flat brush and a size 10 Princeton Heritage round brush. These are my top five brushes, but remember this is not an exclusive list. I'm sure there are many brushes that could have made this list and many brushes that you have in your toolkit that you would say are must haves. 
as long as you have brushes that work well with you, you are using the right brushes. I'll see you all next time. Bye.